visit our virtual STEM competition. Just follow this very simple step. First, check the STEM Made competition schedule in the website. Second, follow the schedule accordingly. Third, go to Facebook page Nali2020. Fourth, you will see the pin post of the STEM Made schedule accordingly in the post. Do enjoy the STEM Made competition. You can also view all the sessions in the video tabs. Then click on the video playlist STEM Made competition to view all the STEM Made presented by our participants. To enjoy our virtual STEM Made competition and don't forget to like and share. Don't forget to tune in to our Nali 2020 closing ceremony live at our Facebook page of Nali 2020 on the 10th of December at 3.30 p.m. As we will announce the Gold STEM Made Award, People's Choice Award, Gold Medal for Nali 2020 Exhibition and Competition, as well as the top three finalists and the winner of Nali 2020 Award. Now, we will all see you there and do enjoy our exhibition, symposium, keynote, plenary and workshop videos till then, available at our Nali 2020 Facebook page. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to everyone. My name is Hayati and it's my pleasure to welcome you to Nali 2020. This morning, we are delighted to bring to you a keynote presentation by a renowned speaker locally and globally in the online learning arena and a great scholar. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed my privilege to introduce to you Professor Karim from University Science Malaysia. Before we begin, allow me first to read his biodata. Dr. Abdul Karim Alias is a professor of food technology at the School of Industrial Technology, University Science Malaysia. Currently, he is the director of the Center for Development of Academic Excellence in USM. He has been teaching at USM for over 26 years. Ladies and gentlemen, Prof. Karim has received numerous awards in his journey as an educator. He was the recipient of the prestigious National Academic Award in 2008 for teaching from the Ministry of Higher Education, Malaysia. He has also been recognized as the top 50 educators in Asia Pacific in 2015 by Terrapin Asia, and he has been awarded with the Malaysia's Rising Star 2015 Award for the highest research citation in agricultural sciences, food science, and technology. He has also received the Malaysia Research Star Award three years in a row for 2016, 2017, and 2018. Professor Karim has also been awarded the world's most influential scientific minds by Clarivet Analytics. And at the national level, he was involved as a writer for the Malaysia Education Blueprint 2015-2025 Higher Education. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Karim is a strong advocate of leveraging the internet as an alternative medium for learning and teaching. He has developed and maintained several teaching portals, websites, online courses, and blogs related to teaching and learning and research. As of October 9, 2020, his teaching videos on YouTube channel has received over 860,000 views from over 190 countries with an estimated hours watch of 49,000 and a total of 4,900 plus subscribers. For many in Malaysia, Professor Karim is the Sifu for online learning and the captain of the frontliners when we first had to move our classes online earlier this year. Many, including myself, are forever indebted to Professor Karim for his valuable sharings. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning, we are honored to have Professor Karim and he will be sharing his thoughts on what will be at the core of learning in the future. And that is lifelong and life-wide learning, a personalized path to professional growth. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the one and only Professor Karim. <coughs> Terima kasih, uh, my good friend, Associate Professor IR Dr. Hayati Abdullah. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and selamat sejahtera. Good morning, all the participants, uh, colleagues from UTM and from all over Malaysia. Um, so first of all, thank you for having me. Dr. Hayati, uh, for this Nali event, thank you for the invitation. Really very delighted actually to be here. It's really a great pleasure, especially um, to talk about this topic, which is very close uh, to my heart. Let me share my PowerPoint. So this is a topic uh, given to me to talk about uh, in this keynote, lifelong and life-wide learning, a personalized path to professional growth. And yes, this uh, a topic that really, really, very dear to my heart and I'm very happy to share with you some of my thoughts on this on this title, on this topic. And um, the picture itself, the photo that you see on the screen now, uh, it has a very deep meaning here, a photo of two generations here. So basically lifelong learning is in the nutshell, the essence is from learning from cradle to grave. Learning, learning never, never, never stop. So I, I have uh, quite a number of uh, slides to go through, uh, but some of it I just uh, touch and go or very run through very quickly. 
uh, don't worry, you can have all the slides that you will uh, see on the screen during my presentation. Uh, I have the link you know, on the last slide. You can download uh, all the slides and you can use it uh, for your own uh, reference later. Okay, all right, if you're ready, let me go through, uh, talk about this. Basically, there are two things that I want to touch on in this topic. Uh, when we talk about life, long life, wide learning. So the what, the why, and the how of lifelong learning and life-wide learning. And then uh, I, will, I would like to elaborate uh, and expand a little bit on the lifelong and life-wide learning, the context of digital age. So let me ask, the, let me start with these questions. I, I would like to ask you this question, you just answer in your heart. How many books have you read this year? And I'm sure you have the answer, but if you look at this statistic here, the average person in US reads about 12 books per year. Well, when we talk about lifelong learning, it's not about acquiring knowledge through books, through reading books, but it is one of the many ways how we can learn and acquire new knowledge, new skill. And to me, reading is one of the most important or key things that we need, we can do in order to acquiring, to continuously acquiring new knowledge as part of the lifelong learning. So I always tell, you know, my, my friends, my colleagues, uh, my students, read, read, read. Only through reading, we can continuously acquiring new knowledge. We will broaden our perspective. You know, we will gain more experience. We can, you know, uh, it will spark new ideas, great ideas through reading. And this is from my personal experience. I love reading so much, and I'm sure the academics in the academia, probably, you know, reading is one of the, you know, our, our kind of staple food. But reading only, reading only is not enough. You know, when we read, we get new knowledge. So we should share the new knowledge that we acquire you know, with the global, uh, with, the, with the world, you know, with the people, with people uh, outside uh, beyond our uh, normal boundary. So after read, 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 write, write, write. So that's the mantra. Read, 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 write, write, write. And that is part of pass, part and parcel of what we call as, as lifelong learning and life-wide learning. Now, I would like to ask another question before I go further. So there's a nice picture here that in this picture really reminds me of my childhood. And uh, that boy could be me. <laughs> now, the question is this, do you get up every morning and always look forward to start the day and do what you love and indulge in your passion? This is to me a question that we sh should ask ourselves and answer it truthfully and sincerely. And this is this question is very important and the answer is very important because in the context of lifelong learning, you know, we want to do what we love, we love what we do and we want to do what we love so that we put our heart and our mind and then from there we can, you know, uh, through through the, the process of uh, doing, the, doing the things that we love, we will, we will uh, learn new things, new skill, and then we can share uh, with the world. So that's a question that I think we really need to think about. And this picture here is my one of my idol, Professor Walter Lewin. Uh, he's a physics lecturer in um, MIT. He has retired for some time now. And uh, if you go to YouTube and search his name, Walter Lewin, you will find a lot of his videos. And he said this, knowledge does not narrow, Knowledge only adds, no, knowledge only adds. And without knowledge, many experiences in life remain very narrow and very shallow. So that's to me really encapsulate the idea of lifelong learning. Knowledge is expanding, but only if you put yourself in the situation where you know, you're continuously seeking creating and seeking new knowledge and acquiring new knowledge. And this 
words was attributed to Abraham Lincoln. Some people dispute this, but never mind. The words that is uh, most important. And uh, he said, I don't think much of a man who is not wiser today than he was yesterday. Okay, so lifelong learning in a nutshell. There are many definitions. If you Google uh, lifelong learning, you will find hundreds or maybe thousands of uh, definition for lifelong learning. And I take this one from European Commission. Basically, lifelong learning as defined by EC, <clears throat> are all purposeful learning activity undertaken throughout life, undertaken throughout life, with the aim of improving knowledge, skills, and competencies within a personal, civic, social, and or employment-related perspective. So when we look at learning in the bigger perspective and education uh, in the, in the, uh, for that matter, uh, UNESCO has defined four pillars of learning, and this is very much related also to lifelong learning. It's basically a continuous process of learning to know, learning to do, learning to be, and learning to live together. So there you are, the four pillars of learning, which to me, again, encapsulate the basic idea of lifelong learning. Learning to know, learning to be, learning to do, and learning to live together. So when we look at a nation as a whole or an organization or an institution, they are actually made up of what? The basic unit is basically the people, the people. So the people themselves must be a lifelong learning. <clears throat> they must be a, a individually, everyone is, should be a lifelong learner. And therefore, collectively, they will form a learning society, a learning cities, a learning organization, a learning institution, and a learning nation, for that matter. So, so to speak. So, um, I look at education in the context of learning as a continuous value chain. You know, the whole landscape of education when we look at from the kindergarten until the tertiary level. So, we can see that when we visualize education as a landscape, every point in the landscape actually adding values. So it's a value chain in terms of learning and learn, adding new values. So I look at learning as a personal growth, as a journey of growth. So in the context of academia as an academic, I look at learning as a journey of growth from a novice academic to a scholar, from a novice to a professional educator, novice educator to a professional educator, and ultimately, to become a scholar, that people recognize as a scholar. So when we look at a journey of growth, you can only grow just like a plant in the previous slide just now, just like a small plant germinate from the seed. It has to be in the right environment. It has to have the right amount of water, the right amount of nutrient, the atmosphere in order for it to grow. The same thing here as an, in the academia, as, a, in, as an academic. In order to continue to grow, to become from, you know, to grow from a novice to a professional educator to a scholar. The person, the individual has to seek and continue to seek new knowledge, new skill, you know, in order to grow. So to me, learning, lifelong learning is related to personal growth because personal growth drives the professional growth. So to, to me, these are very, very important words here. Personal growth drives the professional growth. And it is where in the context of lifelong learning, you know, everyone has to put themselves in the situation where they will continue to acquire new knowledge. Because never uh, learning never stops. You know, when we get a PhD, does it stop there? No, definitely no. Because it's just, you know, a part of the journey. We are, you know, we still have to continue the, the journey and seeking. Uh, new skill and new knowledge and you know, to, to, to grow, to become a professional and a scholar. And when we look at the context of education, you know, uh, the, the, the misconception that having a degree is basically define one's, uh, you know, uh, education. But a, a degree is basically uh, just a recognition of what the person has learned 
uh, during the four years, for example, in the formal education setting. But a degree doesn't give a true depth of one's competency. There's much more. There's a much more that you know uh, one has to learn to, to 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 become more competent and you know to acquire more experience and more wisdom. You know we are familiar with 70, 20, 10 learning model. Only 10% learning happen in the formal environment, but 20% you know uh, through the personal uh, interaction, through the through the mentoring, through coaching, and 70% is through experiential learning. So when we look at lifelong learning, it covers the whole range. The f uh, learning in a formal education or formal setting, learning through the interaction, through the mentoring, through the peer interaction, and learning through experience, the so-called experiential learning. Okay. So we can see, uh, we have seen here, for example, this new uh, Tun Da'i Merjaya memiliki PhD selepas 11 tahun. That's, to me, a real a good example of you know, a lifelong learner who never stopped learning. You know, Tun Daim doesn't need actually a PhD. He has everything. Basically, we measure success uh, through wealth. But he needs to get a PhD for his own personal development, you know, for his personal satisfaction. And, you know, this lady here, the story uh, a few years ago, YouTube trained dentist, fine. So she has the ambition to become a dentist. But for some reason, you know, she was somehow unlucky to make it to the university. To, to learn to get a degree as a dentist. But that didn't stop her. She, was, she learned through YouTube a video. She learned how to, you know, all this intricacy, the skill to become, you know, uh, to, to all this uh, dental uh, technique. And then she started to practice. Of course, it is not the right way of doing it, but this is basically illustrating the spirit of lifelong learning. You can learn just about anything nowadays in the digital world. Another story related to how people learn from YouTube, how YouTube met Julius Higo here, an Olympic medalist. He said he doesn't have a proper trainer. He doesn't have a proper training program. And what all, all she basically what he did was watching videos after videos after videos on YouTube, the technique of javelin. So that basically uh, you know, made him the Olympic medalist. He got a silver medal, medal I think, in the Olympic, uh, in the last Olympic in, in Rio de Janeiro. Okay. So that's lifelong learning uh, in a nutshell. What about life-wide learning? So lifelong learning is about, you know, learning throughout our life from cradle to grave. We never stop. But life-wide learning is about exploring, learning, not confined to one particular subject or one particular uh, topic, but we learn, you know, everything that we can, you know, uh, within the, the the interest that we have, uh, so that we have a really a wide, uh, you know, we have knowledge in a wide range of topics, wide range of subject. So we widen, you know, our perspective. So live wide learning is basically facilitate learners to acquire and integrate various sets of knowledge, sets of knowledge and skills in order to apprehend, advance, or even invent new knowledge and skills. So that's what lifelong, life-wide learning is about. So we can complement lifelong learning and life-wide learning together, okay? Then this is the model when we talk about life-wide life learning. This is a model here, this is called a T-shaped profile. Now this is where, you know, uh, you can have, you can, you can learn a very broad range of subject matter or topics so that you have, uh, you know, wide perspective, you have a wide range of knowledge. You can talk about, you know, a lot of topics. Uh, and this person is, is very nice to have a conversation with because we can strike, uh, you know, conversation on, on any topic and, you know, uh, they can, he, he or she can talk about it. So that's kind of a jack of all trades uh, in a sense. But at the same time, uh, we can also go deep into a particular topic. So this is, uh, we can see here, deep expertise. So we can have very broad knowledge and then go deep into one or two areas. And uh, this is what I encourage uh, new lecturers, new teachers or new academic, especially at least in the first, in the first five years or the first 10 years, go broad, teach, any subject 
given to you or just you know ask to teach as many courses in the curriculum because there is a time in, in the in the first 10 years or at least in the first five years you want to get go broad and uh, know as much as possible the courses within the curriculum then after five years or after 10 years then you stick to one or two or three uh, courses to teach and go very deep and this is where the next model comes in this is the m profile knowledge you have a broad based knowledge but you also specialize in into one or two or even three uh, topics or subject matters so this is called m profile knowledge i think um, nowadays especially moving forward uh, in the 21st century in the so-called in the, the fourth industrial revolution industry 4.0 um, in the era of knowledge workers knowledge you know everything is based on knowledge this m model probably would be very very relevant okay so think about this when we talk about live wide learning this is basically either you go for t model or t profile or go for m profile now a case in point this is my own personal story when we when we talk about life wide learning lifelong and life wide learning i'm i'm basically a professor of food technology technology makanan yeah but i have interest in so many different things <laughs> i have interest in so many different things and uh, a few years ago i was interested to learn about how to become how to do stock trading and i do i know nothing zero about stock trading then i decided to take uh, four or five courses online i paid for the courses and it took me about three months three or four months to go through all the courses until i became very confident then i opened the account i took two days leave and i did three tradings and alhamdulillah i made money i made profit handsome profit from all these three trading then i stopped i just wanted to prove a point that life-wide learning and lifelong learning in this digital world now with online learning online courses are available you know uh, all over the places in many different platforms it's not impossible for us to embark on the new things new topic of interest and learn and go deep and really master reach a level of mastery even even without you know attending a physical uh, classroom so that's a case in point that i want to share with you i think we should really look at lifelong learning and life-wide learning in the context of life-wide learning. If you have read the, you know, you learn Tamadun, Tamadun Islam, for example, we know there are many Muslim scientists that, um, you know, they, they, they are experts in many different areas, like Al-Biruni here, polymath. He was anthropologist, complex astronomy, astrology, chem, from composite chemistry to comparative, comparative sociology, from scientific mathematics to phenomenal physics, and from behavioral psychology to principle of philosophy. Science, arts together. Leonardo da Vinci also have a different expertise, a different uh, um, specialization as well. So this is what we call polymath. And this is what life illustrate the concept of life wide learning uh, to me very nicely, very beautifully. So lifelong learning, life wide learning. I think I have illustrated the meaning, the philosophy, and the concept, hopefully very clearly. Now, let me ask another question here. Are you advocating lifelong learning? Are you a true lifelong learner? Only you have the answer, okay? So I wrote a blog article. Feel free to, you know, uh, read this article. You just Google my name, Abdul Karim Alias, and lifelong learning. You will find this article, lifelong learning from cradle to grave. And I use the same picture here in my slide. And I wrote quite, this is a quite a long, long article if you want to read. But this is uh, where I share my thought. And what I'm sharing here is basically some of the points from this article. So feel free to read this article. And uh, basically the, the main points, the gist, the intipati from this article is this. Learning lasts for life. Albert Einstein says, once you stop learning, you start dying. Very powerful words there. 
and then I wrote and I wrote a, a letter to editor to Star. Uh, when I saw the the news, the article about the fake dentist just now, I wrote this article immediately, and it was published uh, as letter to editor in Star. When there is a will, when there is a will to learn, and this basically, as you can see here. Following the Panama report on the YouTube YouTube trained dentist who was fined by the session, blah blah blah. Then welcome to the future of education. Then we, I also share a story about uh, the the uh, Julius Hugo here that won the silver uh, silver medal and learn from YouTube. So you can find this article also on the Star Online and and basically. <clears throat> The idea of lifelong learning you can learn just about anything nowadays and you it become more and more become more and more easy nowadays because of the digital content is out there and internet is a huge repository of content and knowledge that we can tap at any time anywhere i wrote another article on on my blog here if you are an educator don't stop learning some advice to become a truly professional educators and I pick a picture there, and that picture also has a deep meaning. Reading, you know, reading in the setting where you know it's very conducive. You enjoy the scene, and you enjoy the reading, and you get new knowledge, new perspective um, after you read the book. And yet another blog article. Uh, this is a story about my lifelong learning uh, as part of my lifelong learning but in the context of online learning so i i wrote this uh, this is also quite a long article my journey in online education and why i love it so much how i leverage online education to reach out to learners beyond the physical boundary uh, of the classroom and the picture there also uh, from the same professional photographer this is actually uh, public domain pictures by the way uh, the picture of these two boys i really like the picture you know the two boys were laughing you know talking to each other on the laptop and the setting there is just saying that you can learn just about anywhere so what is why is lifelong learning is so important you may ask it's basically to empower the keyword there is empowering everyone everywhere without exception that is learning for all as championed by UNESCO, as championed in the SDG 4, to empower people and communities to take control of their destiny and society to face the challenges ahead. So lifelong learning is a basic human right. UNESCO championed this because it's a basic human right. It will allow anyone to unleash their full potential, empower them to learn and to grow. You know, lifelong learning will provide you know, skill and, and knowledge, uh, and therefore, you know, provide maybe better employ employment prospect and therefore higher income, social benefits in terms of productivity, GDP, social capital and health. So all this basically are the why, the answer to the why lifelong learning is very important. It is very important because UNESCO championed this learning to be the world of education today and tomorrow the idea of lifelong learning became a central theme in unesco work with the publication of learning to be so you can actually download the pdf here from unesco website learning to be and learning the treasure within the delos report in unesco 1996 and then now it has evolved into sustainable development goal four which basically to ensure exclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all and our government has recognized the importance of lifelong learning so we have uh, actually a blueprint in culturation of lifelong learning from malaysia in 2011 and to 2020 uh, i think uh, this year they have this year or last year they have commissioned a new uh, a new research group uh, from usm led by dr munir <clears throat> to kind of mengkaji uh, semula, to revise what we have achieved uh, from this blueprint. Uh, apparently, there are still a lot of gaps that we need to fulfill. And therefore, in our education blueprint, Malaysia Education Blueprint 2015-2025, lifelong learning, lifelong learning appears again as shift number three 
kebijakan number three here, nation of lifelong learners. So it's already there, it's been there, and will be there still in the future. Uh, it will, you know, as part of uh, our strategic direction in education or the nation of lifelong learners. So basically, in the in the in the document, it says lifelong learning enables Malaysian to meet the changing skill needs of high income economy and maximizes the potential for individuals who are currently outside the workforce. Through reskilling and upskilling opportunities, it also enables the development of personal interest and talents for a more fulfilled life. I think those words, the choice of words here are very good. Uh, it puts together the spirit, the philosophy, and the, and the why behind uh, you know the 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 shift nine shift three here nation of lifelong learning. But um, despite the efforts um, and the vision on lifelong learning that our government has put in, uh, we know there are still a lot of gaps there. The gaps between the so-called rhetoric of lifelong learning and what we have in the documents is already laid out very very nicely. But again, always the last mile. The last mile in terms of the implementation, as we know, as in other as in other things as well in Malaysia, uh, the implementation always sometimes uh, uh, you know kind of falls short a little bit. So what happens in practice? So there's still a gap there that we need to fulfill. And therefore, I think um, when we talk about um, I mentioned earlier when we talk about lifelong learning. You know, at the at the nation, at the at the country, at the national level, as a country, as a nation, at the organization level, at the institution level, uh, it has to start from the individual, because these are just like, you know, the 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 main the the element, the smallest element that constitute the whole thing, the person, the 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 individual. So we need to nurture the mindset here. So it has to start from there. So a lifelong learning mindset, you know, uh, that's why I talk about personal growth because personal growth drive professional growth. Focus on growth. Become a serial master. So this life-wide learning, life-wide learning is basically you learn, you know, as many things as, you know, possible. So you become a serial master, <laughs> not a serial killer. Stretch. You know, stress meaning, you know, you stress the boundary. Don't just confine, let's say, you know, oh, I've got a PhD in this area. So, you know, this is my area and I don't care about other things. This is my life. No, I think we should stretch the boundary because by, by stretching that boundary and learning about other things, the peripheral kind of areas, it will actually uh, uh, enrich, enrich uh, our knowledge and maybe we can come up with new ideas, novel ideas, groundbreaking ideas, just by stretching our boundary a little bit. And build your personal brand and network on your development journey, and then do what you love and discover your Ikigai, reason for being Ikigai. So the reason why we wake up every morning looking forward to do what we love and doing it from our heart, doing it dengan penuh kasih sayang, okay? So when you step into your classroom, you do it with penuh kasih sayang because we are doing what we love, the Ikigai. So have you discovered your Ikigai? That's another question that maybe, you know, uh, you want to answer. And stay vital. Stay vital. I think this is a really, to me, I really like this word because, you know, uh, personally, I keep exploring new things. I read new things every day and I discover new things. So I, I view myself as, as an explorer, the explorer of knowledge, you know, extending the frontier of new knowledge. And that what keep me ticking every day. That what keep my life, I think, very interesting because there are so many new things, new ideas. Uh, you know, always look forward to, to, to do it, you know, to, to translate it into action. Uh, I, I can uh, stress enough how how excited I, I you know I, I want to share about staying vital here by really uh, real you know really understanding the philosophy of lifelong learning through reading through watching the videos through all sort of uh, educational activities that we can do. 
So a lifelong, a lifelong learning mindset is what we need to nurture from small, from from you know from the kindergarten, from when the when the child was is born, you know right up to the whole landscape of our education here, adding value. So uh, you know melento bulo biarlah lay rebong. So it's a kind of mindset we want to nurture uh, our 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 children. So the growth mindset, the mindset to strive to learn something new each and every moment. Okay, so is you know stretching. Remember one of the uh, you know uh, the thing that I show in the previous slide. Stretch. So basically, stretch stretch your comfort zone into a so-called learning zone. So you see the green circle here. Uh, your comfort zone is where you are sitting nicely on the cushion on the sofa. You know, feel so nice, and you don't want to go anywhere else because it's so so comfortable. Why should I you know put myself? Uh, and you know, in in in, uh, in an uncomfortable situation here, when I step out from my comfort zone, of course, but this is where learning and growth happens in the learning zone. Growth does not happen in the comfort zone. So remember, it's all about personal growth that drive the professional growth. So therefore, you need to stretch that learning zone, the comfort zone, into the learning zone. Otherwise, it's either learn or lose. <laughs> So let's view learning, lifelong learning, life-wide learning as an adventure. Ho oh, how nice. Uh, I'm not a biker, but I can imagine why these people spend a lot of time among their you know, bikers' uh, friends, because they just like to enjoy, and it's an adventure for them. How about view learning as an adventure? You know, Because with learning, effort, exploration, and practice, people can always keep growing. Again, it's about growing, cultivating growth mindset for lifelong learning. Of course, you know, we only have 24 hours a day. Uh, then, you know, I need to do this. I need to do that. You know, there's so much on my plate now where I have time to do all these things. That's how it takes great perseverance, persistence, and tenacity to be a really true lifelong learner. So, um, one of the elements just now I mentioned about lifelong learning mindset. Do what you love and discover your ikigai. Because if you discover discover your ikigai, everything that you do is driven by passion. So this is what I call passion-driven learning. Nobody forces you to do, but it's because of your passion that will drive you to learn, to acquire new knowledge, acquire new skill, you know, uh, and, and therefore continue to grow. Okay, so that's the ikigai. What you love, what the world needs, what you can be paid for, what you are good at, you know, all these things, everything overlap, and that's where you can find your ikigai. So the new culture of learning, learning in the digital uh, age here, uh, we are talking about the ubiquitous technology, we are hyper-connected, you know, 5G is around the corner. So how do we leverage all this technology? Mobile devices uh, basically, uh, in the hand of almost everyone, affordable mobile devices. And there's a lot of information out there. Exabyte, now the data is measured in exabyte. It's no longer in tetra, theta, uh, what it is, uh, uh, gigabyte or uh, terabyte anymore. We are talking about exabyte of information. And all these are accessible within a small smartphone in our pocket. So it is really exciting to be part of the learning revolution happening around us with new learning paradigms and technologies emerging on a daily basis. This morning, Dr. Sharipa talked about omni-learning. And to me, it's just another term, another buzzword, but basically it's just like the, it's the same concept of learning on demand, you know, just in case, just in time, just enough, and just for me. And we have UNESCO, again, championing open education resources since 2012, when they launched the, the OER uh, declaration in 2012. So empower learners to assemble. Basically, OER is to empower learners to assemble their own personal, personal learning ecologies to support their individual learning pathway. And what we have, everything there, all the platform, uh, you can go to Skillshare, you can go to Udemy, you can go to Coursera, you can go to our USM uh, Life for Learning uh, platform, uh, lifelong uh, Learning for Life uh, platform where you can find our mo our micro credential. Also, UTM is also very strong there in the forefront of online learning. 
everything can be found here what do you want to learn you want to learn uh, uh, how to how to draw what how to draw using watercolor or oil painting just about anything you can you can uh, just name it you will find the course online including how to become a stock trader which i have proven i can do it you know within three months uh, to learn online and be competent enough to do a stock trading <laughs> So this is just another uh, examples of online learning platform there. And nowadays, you know, as a lifelong learner, you can have a proof. You don't have to register at a university. You can just take, you know, courses from uh, even Microsoft here, uh, from any training providers, from any online uh, providers uh, platform, and you get you get the evidence of learning through digital batch here. So the next question here. Uh, the last part of my presentation here what is your role to promote lifelong learning not only you are a lifelong learner you can be a very good lifelong learner but don't stop there remember i i uh, the mantra earlier read 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 but don't just keep it to yourself all the knowledge that you have accumulated over the years it's now time to share write 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 okay so create a learning playlist become a content curator if you cannot create then curate that's where content curator just curate content that people have other people have created so uh, you can create a learning playlist uh, on youtube so i have hundreds of playlists and i make it public okay i make it public so i have a playlist on salt, all sort of things and i i curate content on this platform called wakelet so you, I have now over 80 topics. Uh, if you go to my, you know, Wakelet, just Google my name uh, and Wakelet, uh, you will find this platform. And this is open to public as well. This is my contribution as part of the lifelong learner to share what I read with other people as well. And uh, I have another platform called Pinterest where I curate content also on this uh, platform. So in the world of digital life, becoming a lifelong learner, there are many ways of doing it. Use all the digital tool. For example, here, reading. If you don't want to read the, the, the book, the normal traditional book, then there is an audio book now. So for example, you can subscribe to Blinkist. You know, uh, on Blinkist, you can, uh, you can sign up for Blinkist and uh, they will read to you 15 minutes, 15 plus minutes, the, the essence or the gist of a book. Every day you can get one, uh, one book free. Uh, 15 minutes uh, summary of one book free yeah? if you want to read all uh, if you want to listen to the audio book of, of, of all the books in their collection you have to sign up and and pay the subscription so audio book is one way now how where we can acquire new knowledge just by you know listening the audio book in our radio in our uh, car the radio in our car then we can get new knowledge every day uh, audible audible belongs to amazon so i subscribe to audible uh, I pay 14, 14, eh? 14 USD every month and I get uh, two or three credits uh, every month to buy new audio book. So I have my collection of audio book now and this has become my new favorite listening to books rather than reading the books. Yeah? So uh, you can also become content creator, contribute to the world of uh, you know the repository out there so that you can contribute to the lifelong learners out there okay so you are a lifelong learner and help the others other lifelong learner, learners through your content so the simplest is write blogs the medium i write on medium platform now and i can see uh, you know uh, many academics now starting to write blogs on on uh, medium platform so this is where you can share your knowledge through this platform uh, anecdotes of academia i would like to invite everyone who's listening to submit your article here free of course and uh, make it visible on this platform anecdotes of academia this uh, i i'm the administrator for this uh, blog publication here i have another blog publication called sustaining planet planet earth protecting the well-being and survival of next generation these are basically uh, articles related to sustainability digital tools for productivity another one I have my own YouTube channel. I would like to invite all of you to come to to uh, to, to join to, to visit my uh, YouTube channel and subscribe. And lastly, uh, to wrap up my presentation here, 
I have I want to share some wisdoms from Confuci Confucius here. By three methods, we may learn wisdom. First, by reflection, which is the noblest. Second, by imitation, which is the easiest. And third, by experience, which is the bitterest. And to summarize, to summarize my whole presentation, basically the gist and the essence of lifelong learning and life-wide learning, develop a passion for learning. If you do, you will never cease to grow. So with that, my standard uh, slides to finish my presentation uh, by Steve Jobs, the words by Steve Jobs, stay hungry, stay foolish. Because if you stay hungry in the context of knowledge, you will continue seeking new knowledge. Okay? If you stay foolish, you will continue to be creative and innovative. And from me, stay strong because you need a lot of energy to go through the world of academia. It can be very tiring. You have to do a lot of things, but we have to do, we have to do it anyway. So stay strong, discover your ikigai, do what you love and love what you do so that you always look forward, forward to wake up every morning. And with that, Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. And this is, uh, I would like to invite you to, cut, to, to, to visit my uh, website because on my website, I have a long list of my web presence, the link to my different platforms, online courses, everything you can find on my website. And then maybe you want to take a picture of this slide because you can, uh, uh, you can find the link to download my uh, slides there. So I guess that's all. Um, Dr. Hayati, thank you very much. And um, yeah, um, yeah. Um, thank you so much. I'm very, very happy that I have uh, shared, <laughs> shared my message on lifelong learning. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Prof. Karim. Thank you so much for the captivating speech, as always, as always. <laughs> Prof. Karim, I, I'm, I'm going to echo one of the comments by the audience. He said that, you know, you have provided us with a great blend of content and motivation. So thank you so much, Prof. Karim, for that. Yeah. And um, I see that there are a number of questions in the comment section. So I will uh, shall now move the, the question and answer session. And I'm going yes. to pick... Um, two questions, uh, each one related to the educator and one related to the students. Yeah, Prof? Okay, so um, I have here one question. Uh, oh, this is very interesting, uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Jehana Erni, yeah, she has something that's related to personal, uh, her personal path, yeah? So she wants to know, uh, would it be good to pursue another PhD of one's interest <laughs> well i think nothing wrong with that uh, you know um, a journey a phd journey as as you as those who have gone through the the journey of uh getting a phd is really uh, a journey that tests our personal traits tests our endurance endurance this test our grit test you know um uh, our 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 inner strength. So if you go through another PhD, but PhD uh, uh, is is very specialized area. So uh, I think during the period where you spend the time to do your PhD, of course you will go deep. So there's a remember the T or the M model just now. So that could be another kind of another tiang, another pillar uh, in your in your kind of uh, knowledge. Uh, but while we are going deep, actually, at the same time, we will also learn a lot of other things, the peripheral, I, would, I, would, I call it a peripheral knowledge around that specialized knowledge. So still, uh, you can learn a lot of things. Yeah. So I think if people are up to the challenge to get another PhD, uh, and I, <laughs> a few people actually ask me this question, is it worth to go for a second yeah. PhD? You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, to me, uh, there's no harm of, of having a second PhD. But lifelong learning can happen in many different ways. Um, you don't have to be there in doing a formal PhD. You can really uh, do lifelong learning through many different ways, uh, especially in the context of digital world nowadays. 
it's so exciting. It's so exciting. There's just so many new things to learn every day. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Prof. Karen, thank you for that answer. Um, now, um, you know, with the current situation and with the current trend where we uh, depend a lot on the internet uh, to search for materials, yeah, uh, there is a question here by Professor Muhammad Nasir from our Facebook. Um, he asked about um, the problem with learning from internet is that the content is not verified. So how would one trust this content that is not verified in the internet, Prof? Very good questions. And this is what I always try to educate my students. And this is uh, one that I mentioned just now about content curation. Content curation, there are two things here. Yeah? Uh, as a lifelong learner, Apart from keeping, the, I mean, learning new things and keeping the knowledge to ourselves, the next part is actually to share, and we can share through two, at least two means. One is to create our own original content, so that's create. But if you don't want to create, then you can curate. So there is one one area called content curation, which to me, one of the very critical skill of twenty first century. Uh, in the in the in the pace of uh, you know in the light of uh, content overload, information overload that we have uh, out there, so we need to teach the skill and we have to learn the skill first, the skill of content curation. What is content curation? Basically, there are four stages there. You know, uh, you you learn to develop the skill to search, you develop the skill to filter, you develop the skill to check for the accuracy of the data. You learn the skill to validate uh, the, the the data, you know, and uh, then after that you you make through you will make sense of the data. Then you synthesize the information. Then you add on your own uh, thought on that info. Though there's a whole range of skill within what we call content curation. So how do we validate the accuracy of the data? We need to learn that skill, and we need to teach our students the skill. So first, we have to learn the content curation skill and teach our students how to do uh, content curation so that uh, they don't simply share the information, you know, when they do the assignment, they just take from the internet, you know, without checking the validity and so on. Uh, actually, uh, I conduct one whole day session on content curation because uh, there are so many different skills that need to be to, to learn there, you know. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. I think that was a very clear explanation by Prof. How would you go about in um, validating and verifying the uh, contents in the internet? Now, Prof, I'm going to go from uh, questions that's related to students now, Prof. Yeah. Okay. Um, you, you touch upon passion-driven learning. Yeah. Here's a question from Dr. Ke Yuk Lee. Um, she wants to know, um, Dr. Ke Yuk Lee wants to know how do you nurture the passion of learning to current undergraduate students? How do you hmm. nurture that passion? I think the, the, uh, one of the ways uh, that we can do is to show the example. I think we have to walk the talk. You have to walk the talk and show rather than tell, rather than ask the students. Uh, so we have to uh, show the example by you know, uh, showing them. Uh, and of course, you have to explain the spirit of lifelong learning, you know, to go beyond learning for the grades. So you have to find time. You have to find time within the, the, the 14 weeks during the academic week to talk about this, uh, the concept of lifelong learning, the concept of, you know, content curation, uh, be careful when you share the information and so on, and then show how you do it. Show how you do it. So I think the best is by uh, showing uh, what how you do it, then keep actually uh, guiding the students to develop themselves to become, uh, to have the characteristics of lifelong learner through the through the learning activities that we do. Um, there, are, there are many ways. Uh, for example, uh, I, I uh, one of the assignments that my students have to do is to use the tool that I mentioned just now, Wakelet. 
So they have to create a, a so-called digital magazine, and this is a group work, collaborative, uh, collaborative uh, assignment. So by using that tool, they learn how to curate content, and you, you know, we, we can teach them uh, the steps in content curation so that they be, they become a responsible kind of uh, content curator, not simply take the article and take all the information and the data. So that's I think we need to play our role and integrate that as part of our learning design or as part of our course design. Yeah. Prof, I've got one more question related to the student, and this is uh, by Dr. Hadija. Dr. Hadija Jaffrey wants to know how to assist our students to develop and enhance their learning mindset. Their lifelong oh. learning mindset. Okay, how do you develop and enhance their lifelong learning mindset? Well, again, I think um, the the engagement uh, student the engagement with the students uh, when uh, when we have the time we don't have much time actually to engage with the students uh, in in whether in the face to face environment or even in the online uh, environment. So whenever uh, we have to grab. Uh, the chance whenever we have the you know the session with them uh, to to talk about the concept of of lifelong learning learning beyond beyond what they need to learn for you know for for the course or for the curriculum and trying to so is it, um, yeah. related to uh, growth mindset yeah the yeah you mentioned about growth mind in fact yeah I mentioned about the growth mindset uh, to my to my students uh, and actually I get ask them to to read. Uh, or to, not to read, to listen, because uh, there's a, on YouTube, there's one whole, <laughs> you can find, I don't know who share, the whole audio book on growth mindset, you know. Uh, uh, then, you know, I, I, I ask them to, to read, to, to listen to that uh, video so that they can understand the, the philosophy and the meaning of growth mindset. Yes, I think that is one of the, thank you for mentioning that, Dr. Yati, because I think that that's one of the main uh, thing that we need to 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 tell our student to make them understand to become a lifelong learning lifelong learner they have to have a growth mindset you know um, and learn beyond just the basic uh, kind of the basic thing that they need to do as a student uh, for the course to get a good grade for example you know it is hard to sometimes to because uh, our students coming from from the different kind of environment, from school environment, they, they, they just confine themselves to reading what they need to read for the exam or for the course. So asking them to go beyond that really need, you know, we have to be very persistent uh, in, in guiding them and advising them, uh, um, perhaps by example as well, you know. Yes, walking the talk, yeah. <laughs> yeah, walking the talk, that's very important. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, Prof Karim, thank you very much. I hope Dr. Hadija, you know, is um, very happy with that answer. Okay, uh, now uh, I think we have approaching the end of the session, but I'm going to um, uh, pose one last question to Prof Karim. And this is from Professor Zainuddin. Professor Zainuddin, who is our uh, acting uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor for Academic and International. Oh. Okay, oh, yeah, so this is um, his question. He says, Salam, Prof Karim. Thanks for the inspiration. One of the biggest challenges of learning on demand or online towards a degree of professional competency is completion. So MIT in a study recorded that the dropout rate is astronomical. <laughs> so only 5 to 15% completion. So what is the experience that you have with your LOD offerings? Yeah, and he's referring to the LOD leading to formal degree or competency or certification, not the leisure learning. Now, if it matches MIT study, how do you address the challenge, Prof? Ooh, there's a question <laughs> from the DVC, eh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, what is the experience uh, with our own uh, program, uh, for example, the online program, maybe the MOOC or the micro-credential? Well, we don't have a success story yet from micro-credential. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, rolling out slowly. But our MOOC, um, I don't, I, 
I don't think we have a very big uh, percentage people uh, complete uh, our MOOC. Um, I, I don't have the, the exact figure, but I would say very, very small. And But yeah, I can relate with my own personal experience as a MOOC student. I am also a MOOC student, a uh, very good one. Good one means I, I have enrolled in, I don't know, countless number of MOOCs <laughs> since 2012. But to be honest, <laughs> a confession, I have not yet completed even one MOOC. <laughs> okay, but I have perhaps gone through probably up to 50%. Now, now this is the reason. People, this is basically the basic principle of adult learning principle. Adult will learn. Adult will learn if they have the motivation to learn. Adult will learn if they have reason to learn. Adult will learn if they can see how they can apply what they learn in the actual workplace, in the actual context, you know. So the good example here, when I took four courses on another platform called Udemy, and I completed almost all the four courses. Reason being, I have the motivation, I have the reason to complete the course because, because I want to learn how to become, how to do stock trading. I wanted to become, to learn how to, be, to become a stock trader, learn the tricks of the trade of stock trading. So there's a very clear motivation, a very clear reason. So it boils down to the actual motivation, why the students take the online course or take your MOOC or take whatever micro credential online and so on. Um, the four courses that I took in terms of design was so-so. In terms of content, it was taught by the experts. So you can see the expertise. The delivery is so-so, but still I persisted because I wanted to learn till the end because I want to acquire the skill, the knowledge, so that I can start the trading. I can do the trading competently. So again, uh, when we look at what we are doing now, uh, I think UTM just launched a micro credential. I saw, congratulations. Uh, you have, you are also, you know, very good in MOOC. But I think do not worry about the degree of completion. Just deliver and design our course to the best of, uh, you know, our ability to the best that we can. And people will come to take the course and complete the course if they have the motivation to complete the course. We cannot force. There's no way we can force. They will do it. They get a certificate. If the motivation is to get a certificate, not so much of the learning, they will do it. You know? So uh, that's, to me, the, the answer to that. Uh, so I think we don't have to worry, lah, Dr. Yati and uh, Prof. Uh, uh, Zanudin. Eh? Um, it's all about... Uh, uh, targeting the right group of learners. If you want to sell katakan, our micro credential program for income generation, for example, so that's why we have to decide what program that would have demand. When they have demand, meaning that they want to take the course because they have reason to take the course. So there's no point doing, uh, that's why we, in the early day when we do MOOCs, we, 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 don't, we don't compete with other universities and do as many MOOCs as we can because we know there's no point. We just do MOOCs within our capacity and we do MOOCs that we think there will be demand for it. The same thing with our approach for micro-credential. We just do what we think uh, would have demand, uh, you know, to the public or to the people out there. Okay. So, 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 so should I say, yeah. So should I say, um, do our best, ensure quality, yeah? yeah. And, um, you know, and with, of course, good strategies, yeah, Prof? Yes. Okay. Reach, the right, reach the right audience lah. <laughs> reach the right audience. Okay. Yeah, reach the right audience. All right. Okay, thank you so much, Prof. Karim, for the answer and also Prof. Zain for the questions. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've uh, come to the end of our session today. I know time flies so fast. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we wish we have more time with Prof. Karim. But before we end, I would like to ask Prof. Karim to give some take-home messages for our audience. Well, <laughs> the, the take-home uh, message to me, um, well, uh, we are lucky, very fortunate to be in the world of academia because we, with the skill, with the knowledge that we have, uh, I would like to urge, I would like to urge everyone uh, continue to be a very good lifelong learner, but I think maybe we can now start 
to contribute, uh, you know, our knowledge in many different forms uh, with the many different uh, online platform out there, as simple as making the video on YouTube and have your channel and uh, start to not share our knowledge, spread the knowledge far and wide and um, be part of the people who contribute to grow other people as well. So it's not um, the lifelong learning, lifelong learning and life wide learning is not only about growing ourselves personally and professionally, but maybe now the next level is to grow other people as well. And this is basically my mission uh, for the rest of my life, uh, Dr. Yati. And I hope I will be given the strength and the help uh, to continue doing this and get the support uh, from everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Prof. Karim, for the very inspirational take-home messages. Yeah, I think all of us here are very inspired by your speech. So once again, I wish to express our heartfelt gratitude to Prof. Karim for being here with us and for sharing the valuable insights into the lifelong and life-wide learning. Thank you so much, Prof. Karim. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for the support. All right. And to the audience, Thank you very much for your participation in this session. Do stay tuned for the next plenary session, which will be at 2 p.m. this afternoon by Associate Professor Dr. Wan Zuhainis, the Director of the Academic Development Management Division, Department of Higher Education, who will be speaking on the topic of retooling for a resilient future. So once again, thank you so much, Prof. Karim, and to everyone. And I'm going to sum up the session with a quote from John Dewey. Education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Have a great lunch and see you in the next session. Thank you. Welcome to Nali 2020. Nali 2020 Nali 2020 Nali 2020 Nali 2020 Nali 2020Forget to tune in to our Nali 2020 closing ceremony live at our Facebook page of Nali 2020 on the 10th of December at 3:30 p.m. As we will announce the Gold STEM Made Award, People's Choice Award, Gold Medal for Nali 2020 Exhibition and Competition, as well as the top three finalists and the winner of Nali 2020 Award. Now we will all see you there and do enjoy our exhibitions.